On October 9th of the year 2020, it became known that 37-year-old Julia Zikova had kept her own newborn daughter in the closet for six months. The woman gave birth to a baby girl at home. She did not go to the medics and was not seen by any doctors during the pregnancy. Hello, this is Defunct City. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss new episodes and stay informed. After Paulina was born, her mother treated her worse than a pet. The girl was practically not fed. Later, doctors would say that the baby was in the third stage of emaciation, and the girl weighed 3 kilograms, 100 grams. Babies only weigh that much when they are taken out of the womb. In other words, the baby did not grow during the whole six months. Paulina managed to survive thanks to her older brother. Julia had two children in addition to her newborn baby, a three-year-old girl and a 13-year-old son. The children were strictly forbidden to tell anybody that their little sister lived in their closet. But the woman's eldest son fed the newborn girl. By the way, as one of Julia's friends said, her three-year-old daughter told the kindergarten that she had a little sister, but no one believed the girl. They thought it was a child's fiction. Julia Zikova was not registered at the registration office in connection with her pregnancy. Polina was found in the closet by Julia's friends. One of them took the child to her home and went to the police. Also, a woman made a video of the gruesome footage. It is impossible to look at them without pain. The little girl resembles a skeleton, so badly her body was emaciated. According to acquaintances of Yulia, the woman's behavior changed after she separated from her husband. Yulia and Andrei Zakovi were married for 10 years. The family was not registered at the police department for minors. Moreover, according to friends, before this incident, Yulia was a model mother. She worked as an economist at the electric machine plant in Kurpinsk. I know that she divorced her husband not so long ago. Anyway, she gave birth and immediately went to work. She told everybody that she gave birth to a stillborn child, but the baby actually lived in the closet. She fed her water and waited until she was gone. The girl was found by Yulia's friends, with whom she had been drinking all summer. One of the mother's friends told the story. Neighbors say her husband was driving Yulia crazy. She was often heard screaming in the apartment. At the same time, when the spouses were still living together, Andre did not work. Julia left him. He did not let her live. He threatened her. He did not work and intimidated her to the point that even her parents did not know anything about the child, although they always visited her. I think she changed her mind because of him, says one of Julia's neighbors. Andrew knew about the child, but did not recognize her confidently, says one of the friends of the family. It is true that recently the story has been so heavily rumored that now it is difficult to discern where the truth lies. Although the assumption that Julia's husband did not recognize his daughter is indirectly confirmed by a video made by the woman who found her, Irina. According to her, she took a video of the girl found in the closet to send it to the child's alleged father. In the video you can hear her say, Andre, she looks a lot like you. How these videos got on the internet, Irina does not know, but after they appeared on the woman who actually saved the child, all sorts of harassment and condemnation began. When Yulia Zikova bought this apartment in the spring, the neighbors were happy. According to the neighbor, they did not hear any suspicious noises from the apartment on the floor below. After she moved in, we never saw her in the eyes. Only a boy, also about 13, sometimes came to visit her son. I remembered him for throwing sunflower seeds in the corridor. I told him off for that. And we never heard a newborn baby crying in the room where they had the pantry, the neighbor said. About a week ago, about 1 a.m., there was an argument. A woman and a man were screaming. She was accusing him of something. He was responding to her. Then the girl, probably her three-year-old daughter, started crying. After that, everything calmed down. The upstairs neighbors also did not notice anything strange about the people in the apartment downstairs. Most of all, they remembered Julia's son, who was riding a bicycle between floors. 
Julia herself only found out about her pregnancy when she was about five months pregnant. She did not dare to have an abortion because she was already quite pregnant. She did not inform anybody. She did not get registered. In the absence of her son and daughter, she gave birth on her own in the bathroom, cutting the umbilical cord with scissors and treating it with her own greenish solution. Zikova's parents believed that their daughter might have committed such a horrible act because of her husband's cruel treatment. Andre brutally beat Yulia and had affairs on the side. The relationship was complicated. Natalia Drintis and his mother sighed. He was leaving, living with another woman. One day my daughter called me in the middle of the night and said that he had raised his hand on her. I ran across town to them. She was bruised with blood. Polina was born as a result. Apparently he took Julia by force because they no longer lived together. The story itself went viral throughout the country and attracted the attention of many people, various media outlets, and television shows. Most people condemned Yulia's inhuman act, but there were also those who defended her and blamed her good-for-nothing father. I believe that in situations where children suffer, both parents are to blame. By the way, thanks to the popular TV show, where the girl's father and Rizikov was interrogated, hooked up to a lie detector. We can say with certainty that he knew about the child and saw his daughter in such condition more than once. And cases of violence against Yulia, both physical and psychological, occurred quite often. Considering that not so long ago the woman underwent several operations to remove a salivary gland tumor, the reason for such abnormal behavior becomes more understandable. A long period of taking hormones, constant stress, and a subsequent pregnancy from an already hated man led to the same hatred for her newborn daughter. Of course, this in no way excuses what Julia did, but it helps to understand the reason that led to this tragedy. Yulia is still under investigation and undergoing a psychiatric evaluation. The woman is charged under Article 105 of the Criminal Code, attempted murder of a helpless child. Yulia is also charged under Article 156 of the Criminal Code for improper fulfillment of parental duties and cruel treatment of a child. As for the woman's other children, they are with Yulia's parents. They are not in any danger, and not so long ago the issue of custody was resolved. Polina herself and her emaciated child were first taken to the Kurpinsk City Hospital, where the little girl received first aid and then to the city hospital in the neighboring city of Krasnodurinsk. From there, the child was taken by helicopter. During transportation, the girl's condition was stable. Polina was conscious. She slept the entire way. Doctors diagnosed her with severe third-degree cachexia, extreme exhaustion. At first, they fed her through vena. Of course, the lack of proper nutrition can be reflected in negative consequences for the body. However, it is still too early to talk about it. The baby had a complete set of examinations. At the time of her admission to the hospital, she weighed 3 kilograms, 100 grams. According to the standards of the World Health Organization, the body weight at 5 months of age ranges from 6 to 8.5 kilograms. This is a serious deviation from the norm. But the baby was awake the whole time, moving her arms and legs crying, which is a quite normal reaction to the examination. Soon after hospitalization, the girl began to put on weight. She gained 400 grams in a week, and although the child's condition was extremely severe, fortunately, everything turned out well. Now a year old Pauline is developing at a very good pace. She is doing very well. She is not sick and eats well. She does not need any help. She has everything. All the food, rehabilitation, and clothes are provided. She gets along well with other children and is a very social girl. She likes to be social and even more so than she would like to be alone. She will be a sociable person. In the playpen she crawls to one, to the other, and with children, and with the staff perfectly gets along, smiles, loves to be in the arms, said one of the employees of the House of Children where Polina met the new year and is to this day.
Soon, it is possible that custody of the girl will be given to Julie's parents. But even if that doesn't happen, there is no doubt that the child will have someone to call her father and mother. After all, over 600 families have expressed a desire to adopt the smiling Polina.